Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Martin Brisson and today I'm with uh, George Carver who is a three principal coach and uh, we've known, uh, George and I have known each other since uh, J we did training with, uh, with Jamie Smart. So welcome George and thank you for uh, answering the, the call of my little interviews which I called um, message of hope or two coaches for the prices of one uh, and uh, i will ask you the same question that i've been asking uh, everyone so far is uh, how is having this understanding the three principle understanding how does that help you navigate the ups and downs of life or right now we're still in the middle of the covid uh, experiment i guess uh, so th how does that help you navigate this time that some people find stressful. Um, well, thank you, Martine. It's nice to see you, so to speak. And um, how does it help me? Well, the, the, the story that comes by is, is that it's, it's, it's always an experiment. It's like, if it's really true that I'm always have my well-being, well, in my well-being and being in a really good state of mind, I'm also going to have my common sense and probably make really good choices. And if that's always available, then going through a time like this, when they, at the early days of this, when the threat assessment was changing every day, and people around me were panicking and going to the store for toilet paper and things like that or food. Um, it was it was it was easy to get swept up in the tide of fear. Um, yeah, fear I read your work. blog. It was beautifully written. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So that's part of the understanding. So the best thing I can say is that how do I see it when it, it happened to me? I'm in a very good place about the whole thing. But in the first couple of days, um, I was, you know, I, I wrote about it in the story. It's hard, it'll be hard to, to tell you. I was sitting around here in my office doing something and I'd been listening to more news than usual. And suddenly I had this panicky thought that, Jesus, you know, maybe we will run out of food. And, um, and so I, I went to run down to Costco and I was gonna just buy a ton of stuff. And, and I got halfway to my car and suddenly I became aware that, wow, I'm really, I'm scared. And I understood enough to know that about this, that the fear wasn't telling me about what was going on. It was really giving me, it was like putting on a pair of very dark glasses and, and trying to find your way through a dark room. It, the more chance of running into objects you don't want to run into than you have of finding the way through. And um, so I, I, I knew enough, and I was just that moment of awareness, I knew I shouldn't take any action. Because when I opened my front door, there was, you know, the world looked just the same. Nothing had really changed. It wasn't like the fires we get around here, where when they say there's a fire, you might have three minutes to get out of your house you know, where you don't have to think about it much. You just have to, you really react unless you've been trained. So I just went back and for the rest of the day, I forgot how long it was, I just went back to what I was doing as best I could. And I was still frightened. I was still freaked, but I knew that it really wasn't telling me much. And at some point, as it always does, the feeling man, disappeared. I, I wasn't paying it much attention. And that's kind of understanding that having, experiencing fear, and anger, sadness, or joy is part of life. And it's kind of what my life is made of, but that it's, it's not ever telling me anything about who I am or what's really going on. It, it may tell me a little bit that fear is a warning light. So, I did settle down and, and then it appeared obvious to me. I mean, that's my common sense that people were way overreacting. 
I've got a business background. I read a lot of business stuff, and it was like we got a pretty good infrastructure here. Um, and so I still had enough concern about it that it was like, well, we generally are really lightly supplied in the kitchen. You know, we're buying stuff fresh every other day. I enjoy going to markets, I like food shopping. Mm -hmm. But it's like maybe I should go and you know get some things that you keep freeze, you know, sausages, frozen peas. And that was it. And that's what I did. I went and bought a bunch of that, but you know, I didn't buy hundreds of dollars. I went to Costco and people had their carts piled high, some of them with cases of canned food. And, um, and my neighbor across the street bought an automatic rifle and lots of ammunition. Oh, it's been, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. He's got a new baby coming. And wow. so that's, that's how it really serves me is, is common sense is, you know, a few thoughts away. And that's what you need in times like this. Data is changing day by day. I'm not an expert, but I think I've got enough sense to take a reasonable action until I know something else. Yeah, as I was saying, being mentored by mine. Now, when you realize that it's only your thought, then common sense shows up and yeah. you know exactly what to do. Yeah. At that Which is different for everyone else. It's different for everyone else, exactly. Because what is right for you may be not right yeah. for me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some of our colleagues have felt okay, but they've decided they're going to stay indoors all the time. Okay. I mean, from the way they see it, that looks reasonable. To me, I'm like, well, that's overkill for my understanding of the biology of the viruses, my science understanding. I'm just like, okay. And this woman in the story on the trail, I've run into more of those people flipped out, terrified of any, everything around them, the viruses. Yeah. And I sometimes have a tendency of going to judgment. I was going up a stairs and somebody was going down the stairs and they stopped like, like the lady. And I was like, I have a degree in health science. And I said, well, no, this thing's not like a pick or a fleece. They just, <laughs> yeah, just exactly. jump on people, right? They can go past. And, but yeah, people go into fear because of, of not knowing. Right, right. And when they do, they lose access to that, whatever their common sense was. I've been watching this series uh, from an organization called MedCram on YouTube. I don't know if you saw the post I put out about it yesterday. This guy is phenomenal. Teacher, lecturer, virologist. He's a frontline um, ICU pulmonary specialist in Southern California. He's been working on these COVID people. And he's a brilliant teacher, and he makes it understandable. Makes it's a very complex area. And I've seen, watched enough of these things. Um, and if you look at my Facebook page, you'll see the my it's put out sixty of them. He does about every two days. Um, some of the ones that Kathy and I, I found watching him, I I've come to understand the virus and how it works and the things we can do, in a way that makes it less mysterious because. When you know nothing about it, it's invisible, and it start, it's easy for the mind to think that it's everywhere. And it's not. It's not. It can't be if it follows the laws of physics. So I, I, for me, that has really been helpful to ground my common sense with you know, some top-flight medical understanding, which is incomplete. The guy doesn't contain. So, um, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the quiet. Yes, the quiet, that's for sure. Nature is taking over, and yeah. Yeah. Air quality and all those beautiful things. Well, also, you know, part of it is I saw that I understand enough about thought to understand how we can get pulled into our sudden interest in other things, and our personal thinking can distract us. And I'm a very distractible person. I'm an ADD person. And I discovered quickly within when this, we, we, got, we got the shelter in place orders that I could have gone one of two ways. I could have gone stir crazy that I couldn't get out. I, I could have thought that I wasn't complete unless I had my daily trip to the grocery store. Right? Mm. 
But then it was like, I started to say, well, no, I can't do that. And then I saw, oh, I've been distracting the hell out of myself running around all day. And that there was a time in the day, the morning, right after I get up and I do a little breathing exercise and I've got, I'm really at peace and I like to lay. And it was just like, oh, I'll do more of that. I sort of let go of, and it was, and, and that became a new routine. I hate routines and a routine grew out of it. it just made sense to me. And so that, that this, this has been something else this time has helped me is seeing how much innocently I was distracting myself, you know, running off here and there. I don't need to do that because the work of the writing and what I'm creating is much more satisfying than combing the product section for the, the ripest artichoke or something. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Good. The plus side of COVID-19. <laughs> oh, I, I may write a book about it. It truly is. I've heard more people have been forced to look at things. They've been running, distracting themselves for years, it's sitting still. I've talked to my cousins and friends who talk about um, really getting depressed and up and down through this and having to look at other things. So it's, if, if you health oriented like you are and I am, you sort of see these things not as huge obstructions. You know, I'm stuck in a room with a bad eye, you know, with a bad feeling, but just something to be like, wow, in the quiet here, it doesn't look so bad. Because quiet's our nature. It is. It's just we've been told by society that we have to be distracted all the time. We need to be entertained, mollified, pacified. Narcified. Well, thank you, George, for your time. <laughs> and if people want to know more about you or come, to, how can they reach you? What's the best way? Oh, to they can reach me on my website, georgebcarver.com. George Carver is my name. I'm, and I'm on Facebook and i um, always glad to hear from people. And uh, uh, or contact you, Martina, and you can tell them, give them my email and all that when you put this out. I will. Good. Cut. Yeah. Can I tell you Thank the truth you. now? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.